loving greetings to you. And this topic is an excellent topic, especially for us at the Marriage Foundation to convey who we are and how we can be of tremendous service to you. Uh, this topic is best strategies to prevent cheating in marriage to prevent. I love preventative things. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? And you're probably wondering if your spouse, if your husband is starting to cheat on you. So before we go too much further, subscribe to this channel and consider becoming a TMF marriage counselor. I know here you are having this concern and I'm telling you, you could be a marriage counselor and it's because this ties in completely with the right strategies. You see, we've missed the point of marriage in our world completely. I used to be a divorce mediator. I went along with divorce. I thought it was cool. I thought it was the right thing to do. And then a couple asked me to help them save their marriage after they'd been through a lot of marriage counseling and they were crying. They didn't want to end their marriage, but they didn't know what to do. So to prepare for their help, and I thought I would be just like all the marriage counselors who I knew and were friends with. I go, so tell me what's going on. Tell me what's wrong. Let's fix it. In other words, marriage counseling has taken on a what's wrong, let's fix it mentality which is not the right way to do it at all. And so this really applies to you because cheating is a manifestation of an unhappy marriage. It's that simple. It is not something that just comes out of left field. It may shock you when it's happening, but it doesn't come out of left field because we live in a cause and effect world. Marriage has a mechanical component. It too follows laws. You don't get rid of laws of gravity. You don't get rid of laws of cause and effect. So the way you strategize is by fulfilling what your original intention was when you got married. Your original intention was to be happy. More so, to learn to love your husband or your wife with all of your heart, mind, and soul. Now, the reason I say learn is because we don't really have that as a topic in our lives, in our world. We're born into a family. There's an expectation that our mother will love us unconditionally. Our father will love us with an even hand and sort of sternness. But no one teaches us that we should be cultivating love. So when people get married, myself included, when I got married the first time, the only expectation was that I would be married and everything would be cool. In fact, I'm sure you had the same feeling. My marriage is going to survive. I'm different than everyone else. And look what's happening. If you're searching this topic, you're running into problems. So what we have to do, this is the crux of it, is we have to design our strategies to prevent cheating and other failures of marriage. We have to design our strategies around the positive. How do I increase the love that exists between myself and my soulmate? Soulmate. I'm using that term as a real term, not like some greeting card company, because we are souls. This is not a religious discussion. We just happen to be souls. We are souls. We find our soulmate, we fall in love, and we get married in order to live with them for the rest of our lives with happiness, love, and harmony.
That's our intention. And so now we're finding manifestations. This is not the only one. Manifestations of, let's call it evil, creeping into our marriage. Now I call marriage the sacred space of marriage because it's not like any other venue in your life. It's not like going into the drugstore to fulfill a prescription over to the clerk and you ask when it will be ready and you just have a smiling face on both sides, very positive, very nice. It's not marriage. It's a different venue. It's a different venue from at work. Different venue from the venue you have with your parents or your siblings. It's a unique venue and we're not taught this. The uniqueness is that it can deliver. It's intended. It's designed specifically by God to deliver unbelievable happiness. Unbelievable happiness. What do you think is the goal of all of us besides to stay out of trouble? In a positive way, it's to be happy. All of us want to be happy. Marriage is the ultimate venue for happiness, but we're not told that. We don't know how to drive our marriage. We don't know how to live a married life. And so God knows what's going to happen. And it does. Total chaos. The divorce rate is over 50%. The happiness rate is below 5%. But you can have it all. You have to learn how to be married. So your strategy should begin with, what the hell is Paul talking about? How, how do I put in more love than I already am? Well, you're not putting in love. You're living in a state of consciousness with your soulmate that is rather mundane. The proof of that is that the love between you is not exciting. It's not better today than it was yesterday and it's supposed to be. So your first strategy should be, how do I learn to love unconditionally? Now, I'm not going to sell you our course, but that's what we teach in our course. And, and there's, uh, I mean, I'll basically tell you what the course does that will help you. The course does number one, it teaches you the hierarchy of your body, mind, and soul, because you're not your mind. You're not your body. God created you as a soul, but you have a body, you have a mind, and they cause all kinds of trouble when you don't understand that you are supposed to be in charge of both. You are the soul. You met your soulmate, but the mind gets in the way. So number one is we teach you about the hierarchy. We teach you, and we're the only ones that do this, we teach you how to control the mind as it should be controlled. Think of the mind as a computer that has turned into your boss. Imagine if you're in front of your computer or your device and it says, go here because of a sale and you just go there. Now I do too, but it becomes a command. And so the mind says, well, he did this and your mind also reacts. I should be pissed off. And so it goes there. You are not in charge of it. So we teach you how to be in charge of it. The last thing we teach you, so for some, they think it's the most important part of marriage, but it's not, is learning the rules of the road of marriage. Of course, you need to know them, but the most important part is learning how to control your mind. Because what I'm talking about in that is controlling the emotions. So you're not controlled by your emotions. You may be saying, well, what about love? Love is not an emotion. This is one of the deficits of having been just saturated with Western psychological thinking. Love is the only reality, in fact, but we need to learn how to control the mind in order to experience ourselves, our true love, and then cultivate that love for our husband or wife. <sighs> Are you getting this? So the first strategy, 
definitely subscribe to this channel. Start getting a feel for what I'm talking about because what I'm talking about is a revolution. In fact, we're starting to train people to be marriage counselors. That's why I even told you about it. In fact, one of the things that's happening now is people are realizing, wait a minute, I want that course to, for men or I want that course for women. But I don't know if I want to pay $379 for that thing. You know, maybe I'll know all I need to know in two months. So this is what's happening. People figured it out. You get the counselor course and we treat you like someone who has the counselor course, but we tell you, you got to start with the course for women or the course for men, because if you want to be a counselor, you have to live in happiness. I mean, one of the great things that just blows my mind, always blew my mind, is that people who are not filled with joy become marriage counselors and they're married. How did that happen? How come you don't know how to be married yourself? So we teach you everything. You get the full package. And so the benefit that some people are taking advantage of is because the counselor course is not, it, it's sold on a subscription basis, not a prescription. So you could cancel after a month. It's only $99 a month. You could cancel after two months or three months or four months, or you could stick it out and you could become a TMF marriage counselor. That's the best news for me because we really want to spread. You might call it the, and I'm not trying to copy the Christians, but it's the good news for marriage. Not that we are not aligned with Christian and Judaic and Muslim thought and Hindu thought. We are because it's, marriage is a spiritual thing. We, we don't learn this stuff. It's so bizarre because people are afraid to say the word spiritual. People are afraid of religion. We're not selling a religion. All we're doing is we're teaching you how to live your marriage, how to strategize from the bottom up, not just for this one specific thing. Let's make your marriage amazing. Every day better than it was yesterday. I love that. Every day better than it was the day before. It's so beautiful, I'm telling you. And you know, we've sold the course now to thousands of people and we have impacted thousands of families in a very positive way and we can you too. So you should look at that, but at least just start with the videos. Look at our article, see what we have to offer. I'm telling you right now, the strategies are there, but tie them to the real desire that you have for happiness for love, for harmony. Don't come up with these weird concocted strategies of this or that. This is marriage is not a new age thing. It's a great gift from your own creator. It's all about love, all about love. I'm all about love too. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. Please like this video. Please share it. God bless you. Take care.